And joining me now on Skype to offer his analysis is Hans von Spakovsky, Senior Legal Fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Hans, welcome back. Good to have you on. So the hearings end as they began divided along party lines. What's your take on this week's hearings? Well, she's probably one of the most qualified candidates uh, we've had uh, come up before the judiciary uh, hearing. And Democrats were clearly frustrated because they really were unable to shake her. Um, she she was testifying with uh, no note, and yet it was almost like watching uh, first-year law students on their first day in class trying to argue with a law professor when you saw Democratic senators trying to uh, question her on cases of all kinds, and she knew them cold and often was correcting them on their legal analysis. Hans, I know that you've taken a look at Judge Amy Coney Barrett's rulings during her time as a judge on the Seventh Circuit. From looking at those prior rulings, what kind of justice do you think she would be? She has made it very clear that she believes it is not the job of justices to do policy. That is the job of Congress and the legislature. And if you look at her court decisions, you will see that what she does is interpret the Constitution and apply federal statutes, uh, the way they're written and the way Congress um, laid out these statutes and intended them to be uh, uh, applied. She has avoided twisting or rewriting the language because some folks might think that that would achieve a better policy result in the end, and she has avoided doing that. If you look at that, it's also very clear that she really doesn't pay attention to who the defendants are, who the plaintiffs are in cases, because she's simply applying the law the way it's written. And that is exactly the kind of judge that we want. Uh, she also spoke about the students that she taught at Notre Dame and the lawyers who've clerked for her. Let's talk for a moment about what her nomination represents and the influence that she's already had. Yeah, you know, it was really amazing. Uh, not only has she been considered by students as one of the best professors at Notre Dame, but, you know, every single law clerk that clerked with her when she clerked at the Supreme Court, including law clerks for the liberal justices, every single one of them supported her. And so she's going to be actually the first working mother on the uh, Supreme Court and one of the few uh, justices who did not go to Harvard and Yale. And, and that's the kind of thing I think we want, that kind of diversity on the Supreme Court. Absolutely. Uh, Judge Barrett is President Trump's third Supreme Court nominee. Uh, how right. significant is that in terms of his judicial legacy? This is very important. You know, ever since Justice Kennedy left, Justice Kennedy used to be the swing vote. He would occasionally side with the liberals. Unfortunately, Chief Justice Roberts has taken over that role. And sometimes in what are politically controversial decisions, uh, he has swung over and, and voted with uh, the liberal justices. Hopefully, with Amy Coney Barrett, uh, she will be a vote to offset when the chief justice does that and will actually apply the Constitution the way it should be applied. Well, Hans, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate your analysis. Hans was boss. Spokovsky, that is, Senior Legal Fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Thanks again, Hans. Thanks for having me.